so so very very good morning and and uh, and, and and it's very nice to be part of this country visit even though it's virtual but but uh, but it's very pleasant pleasure it is great pleasure for me to be part of this visit and I'll tell you a little bit about the health sector growth strategy we have here in Finland. Uh, so my name is Anne Kaukoranta and I come from the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment, where I work at the Innovations and Enterprise Financing Department. And uh, as Tula already mentioned, my responsibilities include especially the R&D actions relating to health and coordinating these R&D actions, not only within our ministry, but also between ministries. And we work very closely together with Ministry of Education and Culture, as well as Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. And, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very, very important to, to acknowledge that, uh, that this interministerial cooperation is, is really the key in, the, in, in implementing the strategy and uh, going forward with different measures and actions set in the strategy. Um, I, I would like to start by a little bit telling um, the key, key actions we have in our ministry and in sort of set the context for, for this presentation. So our ministry is really a growth ministry, I would say. Um, our goal is to generate socially, economically and ecologically sustainable growth. And uh, sustainable growth is, of course, a very topical uh, and trend trendy word these days. And, and we understand it so that it means, for example, boosting competitiveness, investments, research, development and innovation activities, as well as measures to raise skill levels. And sustainable growth is, of course, very important for the recovery after the pandemic. Um, Finland published its National Recovery and Resilience Plan last month, and the plan is conveniently titled Sustainable Growth Programme for Finland. And, and funding for the national plan and the programme will come from the one-off EU recovery package next generation EU and, uh, and the program will focus on four key elements that are actually at the very heart of the sustainable growth thinking and the first element is green transition of the economy as a whole that will also underpin a carbon neutral welfare society and the second element is is, is the focus of, on digitalization and a digital economy that will strengthen the productivity and make services available to all. And the third element is raising the employment rate and skill levels that will accelerate sustainable growth. And the last fourth element is access to health and social services that will be improved and their cost effectiveness enhanced. And the program has been drafted together with different ministries and the Ministry of Finance has coordinated the preparations here in Finland. And this has actually been quite a, quite a heavy process for the ministries and involved lots of experts in the preparations. And, and now when we move to the implementation of the program, this will be a very, very, very topical issue also in the coming years. And will involve lots of the lots of the expertise in the ministries also in the implementation in the coming years. Um, here in this slide you can see the list of main responsibilities of our ministry. Uh, the list is actually quite extensive and when I joined the ministry I was I was quite surprised about the extensive extensive area of uh, responsibility the ministry has and 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 uh, the responsibilities include for example the operating environment underpinning entrepreneurship and innovation 
securing the functioning of um, labor market and workers employability as well as for regional development and and also implementation of for example energy policy and integration of immigrants are also the ministry's responsibility so very broad range of areas of responsibilities under our ministry and uh, this is the last information slide of our ministry and there's actually quite a lot of happening in this slide but i would like to draw your attention to the bottom of the slide where you can find three different figures and um, and uh, the first one the 2035 is the government goal that finland aims to become carbon neutral already by 2035 and and i have understood that that this is the that finland aims to be the first advanced economy to reach this target in the world so there's lots of actions and measures going on to reach this target already now the second one the 75 percent is a very ambitious goal and target to reach the employment rate to 75 percent by the end of 2023 and uh, of course this is a very challenging task and the employment rate is currently somewhere a little bit over 70 percent so a lot of work needs to be done also to reach this target and the last one is the four percent that is the government goal of increasing finland's expenditure to gdp ratio for research and development and currently the percentage is somewhere approximately around 2.5 so also in this regard there needs to be a lot of done both in the public sector and and more importantly also in the private sector and here you can also see above the figures a list of different agencies and organizations that are under our ministry and and especially uh, regarding the health sector growth strategy business finland the innovation funding agency plays a very crucial role role in implementing the strategy and coordinating the innovation actions in finland so so then few words about the health sector growth strategy tula already mentioned mentioned it but uh, this is uh, one of the key key topics for your country visit and it's my pleasure to say few few words about the strategy and set the context for this visit um, so finland's competitiveness and well-being are built on competence research and innovations and finland's rise also out from the emergency caused by the pandemic and also success in global competition required the production of new knowledge, a high level of competence, as well as innovations that bring societal benefits and added value. Um, Finland has invested in health related science, research and education, as well as to research infrastructures and public healthcare system already for decades. And the recent research and innovation activities, like the ones you will hear today and, and also tomorrow, um, are an indication that by working together, we are on a right track. But we still have room to improve and we need more cooperation between higher education institutions, researchers, companies and other R&D actors. And enhancing this type of cooperation, public-private cooperation and partnerships is, is a key objective of our ministry, but also at the heart of the health sector growth strategy. Um, uh, the strategy was published um, quite exactly seven years ago in 2014, and the implementation is jointly steered by three ministries. The Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment, the Ministry of Education and Culture, and Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. 
and, and also the providers of funding, the Academy of Finland and Business Finland are a crucial part of this uh, cooperation. Uh, but I often say that we like to think that the strategy is kind of a um, shared platform uh, to be implemented jointly, not only by the ministries and the public sector, but also by the research organizations, the business community, university hospitals and other stakeholders in the health sector, research and innovation field. So, so the implementation uh, requires the whole ecosystem and, and different players, players and is and the strategy is only the platform where to build up the different actions and operations. And, and here on this slide, you can see some of the targets set in the strategy in 2014. And, and these are actually very valid also today. And the overall aim of the strategy is to, one second, uh, is to is to systematically develop the health sector's operating environment and ensure its competitiveness, also boost investments and to achieve economic growth. But there's also the other side and the strategy also creates opportunities for better health care and a basis for a more efficient social and health sector. So these two aspects are, are boosted together. So, so the current government um, is already the third consecutive coalition government to continue the implementation of the strategy. And I think this conveys an important message to both Finnish stakeholders and in international context of the strong political backing for this area of work. So in seven years time, there has been different governments, different political parties in, in power, and, um, but, but they have all agreed to, to work and, and back this area of work. Um, the roadmap for, for this strategy called Sustainable Growth and Wellbeing was published last year and its key objective is to continue the implementation of the strategy and add detail to its objectives in 2020-2023, so during this government period. So as the strategy was published already in 2014, a great deal has already been achieved, also under the previous government's roadmap. And examples of this are for example, the, the act on the secondary use of health and social data, the establishment of different national centers of excellence, such as Finnish Cancer Center and uh, Neurocenter Finland, the launch of a network for Finnish biobanks, as well as, as, well as different actions in regional ecosystems and, and boosting, for example, the testbed activities emerg emerging around university hospitals. And, 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 and a lot has been achieved, but, but we find that plenty more of work needs to be done. Uh, this roadmap um, also promotes sustainable growth and development in line with the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The roadmap is also building up the national competence base and networks to prepare for and respond to extensive societal challenges, uh, such as the uh, population aging that is really rapidly, rapidly affecting, affecting Finnish welfare society and needs to be responded. Also ensuring that health sector R&D activities have an enabling base by promoting internationally competitive R&D infrastructure and regulatory environment that is enabling. Also sufficient funding and a strong and renewing knowledge base is, is very important aims for the strategy. And of course, the ability to produce and implement innovations is is important part of the 
roadmaps targets. Um, also, activating and engaging citizens in health information use and service development is, is important and is something new that we didn't have, for example, in the previous roadmap. And we find that this is a very important element, element in the new roadmap. Um, the roadmap identifies three interlinked areas of measures for developing health sector research and innovation. The first one is operating environments. The second one is expertise. And the third one is partnerships and cooperation. And there are, if I remember correctly, around 23 different measures under these areas of measures so so there's quite a lot of things to be done and and for example under the operating environment there are measures for example um, dra to, to draft legislation on biobanks and genomes as well as promoting the launch and, and development of national centers of excellence excellence such as the, the genome center uh, Finland has good starting points to succeed as a leading country in competence and innovations. And companies are key research partners and engines of making choices for higher education institutions and research institutions. Uh, research and networks must be grouped into larger competence centers and ecosystems in order to strengthen, broaden and increase competence. Um, ministries and university cities support the building of internationally attractive innovation clusters and the linking of thematic innovation networks to global value chains through ecosystem agreements. In the health sector, nationally networked and strong clusters representing specific research areas such as genomics, bring well-being and growth and attract international researchers, experts and professionals, as well as knowledge intensive companies and funding on the levels that no player would be able alone. Uh, the combination of our biobanks, extensive healthcare registries and the R&D friendly regulation creates a very competitive environment internationally. Being able to rely on ethically sound legislation and research practices is not only important for our citizens, but a trustworthy environment is also a key enabler for research community and the companies doing research in Finland. Digital health and uh, personalized medicine are among the areas where we are strong today. The National Cancer Center and NeuroCenter Finland have already been established. And our objective is that the National Genome Center and the National Drug Development Center will be established soon. There are also some preparations for possible new centers, for example, around digital health. At the same time, importantly, we are taking actions to enhance the collaboration between our different biobanks. Um, launching the operation of national centers of expertise and close cooperation between them is, is, is very important. A common ecosystem of health and social data use and centers of expertise for both national and international cooperation should be built and strengthened very systematically. So this is a very, very important part of the work we are doing together between different ministries and other stakeholders in Finland. Okay, so here is just a, a small recap how we see the government as an enabler and encourager. And, and of course, the R&D and innovation funding is a very important in order to encourage enterprises and researchers to, to work together and, and boost renewal and international growth. But there are also other ways how public sector and authorities can promote renewal, uh, such as, as I mentioned already, the boosting the different partnerships 
also accelerating the ecosystems and uh, building these growth strategies such as the health sector growth strategy but also the utilization of research results and and utilization as well the digitalization and knowledge and intellectual property rights rights is very important and and and, and regulation building regulation that uh, enables enables enterprises and also researchers uh, to do their work efficiently and and as well increase the market for the companies and and in the health sector it's very important to to also work in the area of public procurement and and boost the innovation innovative public procurement and and this is something we we work also very much in, here in, in our ministry with. And, and of course, encouraging cities and regions to work together, not only nationally, but also more and more internationally is, is very important. So, so there is plenty, plenty of different kinds of measures and actions that the public sector can do in addition to the funding to boost the R&D activities and actions actions. Just a small introduction to Business Finland, that is the innovation funding agency here in Finland and under our ministry, what they are doing around the personalized health and, and uh, what kind of um, programs and actions they, they have ongoing at the moment. Um, I wanted to highlight this one specific program Business Finland has, it's called Personalized Health Finland, uh, that is running until next year. But this is, a, this is a area of work Business Finland has focused a lot also in the past. And, and, and under this program, they, ha they are focusing in utilizing individualized data like genome, healthcare or biobank data as well as lifestyle information to predict and prevent illnesses, to personalize care and to participate people to take responsibility of their own well-being. And, and, and of course, they are also building the ecosystems and, and you will hear more about these during your visit. For example, the FinGen ecosystem is a good example of the ecosystem building we are we are we are working with in Finland and Business Finland is also part of in the FinGen ecosystem. Um, they under this program they provide different kinds of services and and of course the international cooperation and uh, working together with research institutions and also the private sector is 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 at the heart of the work under this program. And, and Business Finland is, is actually the, if I can say, the, the opera, operational arm uh, in this health sector growth strategy from, from our ministry's point of view, because they, they are the agency that works at the operational level. We in the ministry, we work with legislation and drafting different plans and strategies, but Business Finland is the organization that that can grant funds, for example, to different projects and uh, can assist uh, companies to grow, grow internationally. And, and they work very closely with, with uh, companies and different research organizations. And they have a very important role in that. Um, and just to uh, sum summarize the goals of the program it is it is the growth of the personalized health co companies here in Finland and the industry support the growth for the companies it is to attract the investments to Finland in the field of personalized health and building and promoting the ecosystems around the personalized health so so they are very so they have a very, very crucial role in building up the ecosystem around personalized health in Finland and, and, uh, and, and promoting, promoting and 
attracting investments to Finland. And, and I think that also Lisa Maria will continue from this. And I know that the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health has very close and good cooperation also with Business Finland around, around personalized health and, and building up the ecosystem together with Business Finland and other act actors here in Finland. But so thank you for your attention and... Thank you.